thank you very much. First Lady Suzanne Shore, Mayor Sother, former Governor Heinemann, and the force behind, Sally Ganim, <laughs> Congressman Hal Dobb and Mary. Do you know that Hal Dobb tells everybody what to do? You know, they, he does it all the time. What amazes me is we all listen to him. <laughs> what? Lieutenant Governor Mike Foley, such an honor and a pleasure to see you here tonight. And the Bacons. I always introduce Angie because, um, again, we know who keeps the home fires burning for 36 years now, who's uh, the force that keeps the family going, that keeps this guy going, and that's Angie Bacon. And we're all here tonight for Don. So friends and neighbors, it's great to see all of you tonight. As you know, I've been um, pondering lately. I usually start these by telling you what I've been pondering about as I sit in airports, uh, flying back and forth Thursday nights or Friday mornings to get here to Nebraska and then turn around on Sunday morning to fly back to DC. So I was pondering Don Bacon. He's hard to ponder because he texts all the time. <laughs> so he interrupts my pondering. <laughs> and I ponder, what would it be like if he wasn't there? Because we're in uncertain times. We are in tough times. We are in times when it when it takes determination, when it takes leadership, when it takes integrity. And I know that Don Bacon embodies all of that in every single one of those text messages that he always sends me. We have so much in common on the interests that we share in Congress. We both have a deep love of this country and we want to make sure that our military men and women have the resources that they need in order to perform the missions that they're given. So why there might be, there might be some out there who believe that military spending is out of bounds, out of sight, doesn't need to happen. I can tell you that Don and I know the threats to this country. We understand the threats, and we will do what is necessary to make sure that we can confront them. So thank you, Don. Secondly, Don Bacon is someone who feels with his heart, and he holds many, many issues close whether it's foster children, whether it's people who are looking for a cure and are dependent upon research that we, that we do at the federal level, and in many cases in coordination in a partnership with universities, with hospitals. He understands the need for that and why that is important for the people of this country. And thirdly, it's just kind of a lot of fun. <laughs> I don't want to lose that. Do you want to lose that? No. No way. We need Don Bacon to get reelected. And how are we going to do it? You are going to do it. We are going to do that. We are going to come together and make sure that Don Bacon is reelected to the House of Representatives for CD2, and he's going to win by even more this time because of your help. So thank you all. As I look around this room and I see many familiar faces and a whole lot of new faces. That speaks well to this gentleman, too, that he can draw so many people together 
who have so much faith in him, what he believes in, and what he sees for the future of this country, and what he is willing to keep fighting for. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Bacon. Thank you.